So now that we've had a run through of the base and MVP, as well as the anim layers, we can go ahead and actually start building our own from scratch. So this is going to be quite simple. For example, we are not going to go into, you know, the whole jump, fall loop, and all that stuff that comes with the third person template from Epic. Because, I mean, essentially that is what this anim graph slash state machine is. It's literally from the third person sample from Epic. It just has the addition of a crouch state and the locomotion has been replaced with eight way. So those are really the only differences there. So to begin, what we're going to do is go to our tutorial folder, create a new folder called animation. And from there, we want to make a new anim VP. Now for the skeleton, we're going to use the mannequin from the third person project or sample, so characters, mannequins, meshes, and I'm going to name it animvp underscore, we'll just do tutorial. So open that on up, and we're going to work on the locomotion first. So to begin, let's go ahead and make a new state machine. So we'll just call it locomotion, and plug it in. Inside of our state machine, Let's go ahead and add a new state called, uh, well, I guess just locomotion because that's essentially what it is. And inside of there, we want to have our blend space. Now, the only problem being because we selected the other skeleton, we don't have that blend space by default. So to, what we can do is just literally copy and paste into ours. From there, remote direction and speed to variables, compile save and we are for the most part good to go we just have to do this logic here so to begin uh, we can do this in the event graph or we can make a function for it i would prefer to do a function in this case so we're going to make a new function and we're just going to call it let's see uh set speed and direction so inside of here we're going to go ahead and just grab our pawn owner and actually realistically we don't even need the pawn part so we can just get the owning actor from there if it is valid we want to go ahead and get the velocity and the current rotation of that actor so one thing we can do as well is simply remote to local variable and just call it owning actor so that way we're not constantly getting this function here because it is pure every time we access it we're going to be essentially calling it again so we're just going to go ahead and cache owning actor and from here we can go ahead and get the velocity as well as get actor rotation so the rotation is going to be used in the direction calculation and the velocity is going to be used for the actual well speed so what we want to do for speed is just drag off of the get velocity and search for the length and we want the vector length x y because we don't want the z axis so for example if we jump or we're falling then that's going to contribute to our quote unquote speed and we don't really want that for this context because we just want our forward back left and right velocity from there we can go ahead and drag off of our get velocity and calculate the direction so with our direction we can now look into our direction variable like so. So quite simple. Try to organize this a little bit better. And that should take care of well, both of those values. So all we have to do is simply call set direction or sorry, set speed and direction. So now in our character, let's go ahead and swap to the AnimBP tutorial. And when we press play, I am having some collision with the firearm. So for the time being, let's actually not spawn and attach it. So like so, we have forward. Now we have our eight way locomotion. So that's working like we want. So moving down to the AnimBP tutorial, we head back to the Anim graph. We need to add the additional 
well, one, the procedural layer, and two, the upper and lower body split. So we have our locomotion. Let's go ahead and add the anim layer. So we're going to go to class settings, and we want to add an interface. And this interface is the ALI SKG SF example. So what that's going to allow us to do is get these two animation layers here, and we just for now want the procedurals. So we could say plug that in, but then we're going to have the procedurals running on the upper and lower body, and we don't necessarily want all that. We just want this to be on the upper body. So what we can do is we can take our locomotion and save cached pose and just call it locomotion. So once we have our locomotion, we can also just grab it. If I can spell it right. By use cached pose locomotion. So from there, we are going to have all this applied, and then this part here runs only on an upper body. So we're going to drag out and save this as a cache pose and call this one upper body procedurals. So now that we have that, we can take our locomotion and our upper body procedurals and run them on whichever bones we want using a blend mask and the layered blend per bone node. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and copy our locomotion cache and search for layered blend per bone. So what we want is for the blend mode to use a blend mask, not the branch filter. And the blend mask we want to use is the upper lower body split mask. And that's the one we've done in previous videos. As you can see here, that is set up to split the upper and lower body. So for the upper body, so blend pose zero, we want to grab our upper body procedurals. So search for upper body procedurals and plug it in. Now that we have that, we can then go ahead and technically just plug it in. And what I'm gonna do now is select the anim layer and make a default. And naturally, because it is using a different uh, skeleton, so to speak, the anim layers are not gonna show up. So let's go to the SKGSF core, layers, procedural, and I'm just gonna take this unarmed layer here and assign it the skeleton of the mannequin for the third person project. That's for the UE4. That'll be for this one here, because the top one's what it's already is. So we want the one from characters, mannequins, meshes. So now we can set it as default. So we hit play now, we can look up and down. So for example, if I look down, you can see we are looking down. If I look up, I went way too far. We are now looking up. So we're starting to get that kind of in place. So once we have that, I should also mention that keep, you know, the upper and lower body separated so you can still run the arms and the legs and all that kind of stuff. Okay, once we have that, we want to go ahead and start working on actually having a, uh, what do you call it? You know, holding a firearm, so to speak. So we want to grab the idle pose. So I'm going to go to here because, well, same thing, it's for a different skeleton, and just copy this basic rifle idle over here to replace the locomotion. So at some point, we're going to kind of overhaul how we have that initial idle animation and it's going to be a much more intuitive system. So once we have this, we hit play, you can see we have the arms and everything like so, and they are being influenced. So they are being influenced quite heavily, and that is something we will resolve shortly. So the other thing we want to do is, while we're at it, take the main procedurals and MVP, because we're working on the firearm part, and go ahead and, same thing, assign a skeleton, to be the mannequin from characters, mannequins, meshes. And we will use that instead now. Okay. So what we can do, delete that locomotion cache. And once we have done the layered blend per bone, we are good to go ahead and apply the IK. So the first thing we want to do, and I'm going to go ahead and actually attach a firearm to the character so we can better visualize this. 
So here you can see the firearm. I look down. You can see the firearm itself is not following. It's just, you know, staying in place. So to resolve this, we need to use the copy phone node. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy IK handgun to VB IK handgun because this is where all the procedurals occur is on these virtual bones here. And then at the very end, once everything is done, we then move IK handgun to this virtual bone and it is now applied. So we can just drag off, do a copy bone. And we need to convert the space like so from local to component. And then we're going to have to do it back at the very end. So for this copy bone, I'm going to go ahead and undo the pins because I don't like having them. There's no point. Copy translation and rotation. And the source bone that we want to copy from is going to be the VB IK hand gun. And then the target bone is going to be IK hand gun. So essentially, IK handgun is being copied to the position and look or the location and rotation of BB IK handgun. So as you can see, now as I look up and down, the firearm is following. However, the right and left hand are not. And that's where two bone IK comes in. So we want to basically use two bone IK to position hand R and hand L to IK hand R and IK hand L. So search for two bone IK. And we want to, let's see. This is also where we control the elbow positioning and all that kind of stuff too with it. We want to make the IK bone, IK hand. Let's just do hand L for now. Ah, eh, crap, I can't actually. Oops, not world space. I'm trying to remember. Let me check as a reference. So, the two bone IK. Okay, so we're using bone space. Okay, so IK bone is going to be the bone we want to move and the effector target. And then bone space is going to be the bone we move it to. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm starting to get a little bit confused. So, we're going to grab Andar as the IK bone. Then the effector location space is going to be in bone space. And let's go ahead and take a rotation from it so we can manipulate it, or better yet, it follows the rotation with it. And the effector target is simply going to be the IK hand L. So, or sorry, this one's going to be hand L, not hand R. So hand L to IK hand L. And then for the effector location, we don't need to expose it as a pin. And same thing with the joint target. I just don't like having them there. But now what should happen is the left hand is now following the firearm like so. So next up, copy, paste. We do the exact same thing, but instead of IK hand L, we do IK hand R. And instead of hand L, we do hand R. Copy, or sorry, control, uh, compile and save. And now the right hand is also following. So that gets those to about how we want. As you can see though, the elbows are canted in quite a bit. So we want to select one of the two bone IK modes. So I'll do the one for the left hand. Then we can select this little guy down here, which is the joint target. So if we look at the joint target location, as I move it, it modifies that value. And at the same time, it is moving the elbow. So let me make this a little bit bigger. So we want it to go kind of out and down a little bit and same exact thing with the right hand here. So we select the one for hand R, select the joint target and just move it out. So now we have our elbows in a pretty good position and we are ready to continue. So go ahead and save all. And there we go. So we just do have a issue here with the aiming part. So it's more so you can kind of see the firearms not firing or uh, not following, following one to one with the actual spine. So as I look up, 
you know, everything for the most part is following except for some of the key parts. So we need to resolve that. So back in our random BP, we go to the layered blend per bone. There is a mesh space rotation blend. I want to go ahead and enable it. And once I hit compile, you can see it kind of snaps our torso and everything up into place. And now when we hit play, the firearm is actually moving. Granted, the rotation lag is kind of extreme in this case, but it's actually moving with us. So we have our locomotion, lag, rotation lag, our sway. Everything is just kind of working as we had it. So I do notice a little bit of an issue. So if you look at the left hand here, that the left hand pops off. So is it when I move up to down? Okay, so it's when I'm moving, it seems like it's mostly noticeable. So that can be a issue of the left hand just not being able to fully reach. So I'm going to end up covering that in a separate video because I want to kind of have a dedicated topic to it as it's something I get, you know, asked occasionally. But to make a long story short, uh, let's say, for example, let me actually view the animation. Let's pretend that the spine, we'll just do the lower spine, is rotated, eh, better yet, let's do the upper spine, is rotated up, kind of like that, it's more square, oh, I didn't add a keyframe, and add a keyframe, like so, so you see how the left hand is fully extended, uh, as I move, you can see the left hand is popping off the grip. So let me actually go a little bit more, but like just on that verge. So hopefully you're able to see that, but the left hand is floating away from the grip. You know, it can't, it doesn't have enough reach. All right, add two keyframes. And I just undid it all. So we'll just go extreme. Just the left hand's not able to fully reach where the grip target is. So you can see it's fully extended. It can't actually grab it. So that's where you just want to go through and adjust your idle animation. So for example, those way out here, you know, rotate it in, that kind of stuff. Use control rig, whatever, add a keyframe, blah, blah, blah. And then you will be able to actually reach. So you want to have a little bit of bend here in your elbow, kind of like this, maybe a little bit more. And that's usually a strong indication of, hey, this animation is good. It can reach out as far as I need to, you know, that kind of thing. And then worst comes to worst, what you can end up doing is just moving your actual grip back. And then you're never actually going to have that problem because you're always going to be, you know, close enough in. Granted, at this point, I may as well be gripping the mag well, but hopefully you kind of see what I'm talking about there. Anyways, uh, for now, this is going to be our stopping point for the NMBP. And in probably the next few videos, I'm going to start getting into the actual logic portion because we're now making some additional logic. And what we're going to start covering is ways that we can actually link and unlink these anim layers, as well as, you know, a method that I recommend for handling your idle animation. So, for example, if you're unarmed, playing the locomotion and then once you say pick up a firearm you now are playing your animation that is holding whichever firearm it is you are holding so rifle pistol blah 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 so with that said i will see you in the next one